Well, clearly this is not a great logo, since nobody knows what, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the versus... Pardon? View, something coming out from Tadwick. It may be. It's not Tadwick. Sorry? It's not Tadwick. It's not Tadwick. It's not Diversitas. It's not uh, Itis. It's, we've checked a whole bunch. Don't know what it is. This, these are all GBIF slides, by the way. I didn't make these. Uh, but I was making a presentation for GBIF, and they sent me a whole bunch of slides to use. So their current affiliations, I'm not going to read them all, but it's, it's the who's who of uh, many of the biodiversity players uh, nationally and, and internationally um, uh, throughout uh, Europe, America, and, and Asia. Okay, so that's the good. We're now going to get to, it's not really bad, but it's somewhere between good and bad, and I will let you guys be the judge. In 2010, this is a map representing uh, 197 million records of animals and plants that GBIF was then um, receiving from data publishers all around the world and serving uh, globally, 2010. And GBIF boasted that in 2012, that had grown to almost 400 million records that it serves globally. I'm going to go back again. 197 to 400 million records. The number of data publishers has grown steadily from August of 2007 when GBIF began serving data all the way up to uh, the present. Many, many and more collections and institutions are serving um, uh, voucher data and observational data to GBIF and that is fantastic news and GBIF is to be congratulated for this. The data records published through GBIF has grown steadily from August 2007 to the present day and continues to grow and I predict if uh, current trends uh, continue Certainly with genomic biodiversity data, this graph is just going to zoom off the charts. That's the good news. 300 and almost 400 million primary data records, museum specimen records, observational records, around 10,000 individual data sets. So, let's hold on for a second. Once the applause stops, what's the realities? What still needs to really be accomplished with this data? There is no feedback to data publishers on the number of data downloads, the size of the data downloads, and who has downloaded the data, and by, by whom. Sorry, mistake there. Data publishers need to know how much of their data is being downloaded and used through GBIF so that they can use that information in their applications for grants, in their presentations to their administrators to continue their activities. But right now, that feedback mechanism is not present. So there's no citation mechanism for data providers. And I don't know how you feel in Africa, but certainly we at KU feel that we would like to have citation for the millions of records that we provide. And I'm sure you feel the same. We have citations in literature, we have citations in research, we should have citations in the provision of essential data for GBIF. So there's no way for providers to cite the use of their data and the investment that they are making in informatics to their own administrators. This is something that GBIF must work on and something that the Science Committee has pushed very strongly for the last four years. Okay, GBIF says it mediates the repatriation of data. Biodiversity data from the south that was gathered and archived and held 
by northern institutions. Now freely accessible to all via GBIF. Let's dig deeper into this uh, issue. What's the science factor here? There is no concerted effort on the part of GBIF, and there hasn't been, to my knowledge, since its beginning, to engage the northern countries and institutions, especially the major museums, to digitize, serve, and repatriate the data on southern biodiversity. It just has not happened. British Museum, yeah, we're naming names on YouTube. The British Museum, Kew Gardens, the Paris Museum and Herbarium, Berlin, Munich, etc. museums and Herbaria, Brussels Museum, both the, R, the um, uh, RMCA and Arbenz. Uh, for example, the RMCA is the museum at Tervuren, which has arguably the finest, most comprehensive collection of uh, biodiversity from the Congo that anybody has. Wow. Why isn't that being served? And why isn't GBIF working hard to um, facilitate that to happen? Here I've, uh, I've just listed uh, old world um, institutions. Same thing applies to the United States, Canada. Uh, the Smithsonian is a huge offender in not digitizing its collections. Certainly the biodiversity from the south uh, much, much more quickly and energetically. The American Museum of Natural History is a, a, another offender. The Field Museum, the Carnegie Museum, where I used to work many years ago, and uh, the LA County Museum, most of the big freestanding museums. The university museums, university collections have a better record, but it's still not as good as it can be. Third, GBIF will say that there are increasing data quality. But let me go back. The good news here is that GBIF, on the urging, strong urging of the Science Committee, has finally formed a task force to engage the large museums in the United States and Europe to start digitizing their major collections for repatriation of the data and the knowledge uh, to um, southern countries. So third, GBIF will say that it assists in increasing data quality because data quality is everything. If scientists are going to use the data that GBIF is serving, that data has to be trustworthy. That's part of that blue chip. You can't use data you don't trust because otherwise no one will trust the science and no one will trust the research and no one will trust the results. So here's an example of records with coordinates that are claimed to be from the United States, but actually following new portal processing, whoops, something wrong here. Records with coordinates claiming to be from the United States showing up as China by mistake. These are just simple lat long errors. When they were cleaned up with the new portal, that was corrected and it was restricted to the United States. Town tells me that these records, however, are still online incorrectly georeferenced. Is that correct? Provider puts out, the provider puts out. Right. And so, unless GBIF were to be communicating back to the provider, which it's not, then essentially all they're doing is either filtering and just throwing away those records, or they might be. Go back to the China one. Everybody, imagine a mirror placed right at, at Greenwich, England. Those China records are the mirror image of the lower 48 United States. Okay, so all it is is that Western Hemisphere 
longitudes should be expressed as negative and they frequently get expressed as, as positives. positives. Right. So I don't know whether they are correcting that for the purposes of the GBIF data serving, but not in the original data set. Right. Or whether they are uh, simply filtering them out and throwing them out. So what should happen here is that if GBIF detects this and makes these corrections, the corrected data should be sent back immediately to the original providers for them to uh, replace their incorrect records with these new uh, corrected records. Chris, this doesn't happen. Just for fun. This is the north-south version. This is if you put a negative in the latitude. Right but not in the longitude. But you have the longitude correctly. Right. And you can even see where you get both of them wrong. So you get this literally four corners view of the world. All of those are coordinates that should fall within the United States. Right. There are other errors that, that at least are worth looking at, all these long lines. Anyway. And those lines, look at, look at where that one, the first one you traced was. Yeah. And then look at this one here. Yeah. That's where one or both of latitude and longitude is zero. Missing data is zero. So the, the data needs to be corrected and shipped back to the original providers. This is not happening. So it just continue to serve the same uh, data with errors so that researchers, every time they download a data set, have to keep cleaning it in the same way, which takes a lot of time. And frankly, from feedback, anecdotal feedback from researchers, they get tired of doing this and they say, I'm sorry, we're going to go elsewhere for our biodiversity data. When that happens, GBIF fails its blue chip mission. It's not trustworthy. And if it's not trustworthy by the scientists, then certainly the people that GBIF wants to impress, IPBES, and other international, CBD, other international groups, won't trust it either. So this is a, a very, very, the fitness for use of the data is extremely important, a critical issue. So, to summarize, congratulations on making a new portal, which will be presented to the governing board this October in Berlin at the annual meeting, but why not improve the fitness for use for the rest of the data set? Essentially garbage in, garbage out. The new portal being featured at GB20 in Berlin is an excellent achievement and, and deserve terrific congratulations. Uh, so access to the data will be much improved and much streamlined as will be the publishing of the data by individual publishers. However, accessing the data, they'll still be accessing the same challenging data sets unless they are made much more fit for use. I'm now going to turn over the podium to a town. Uh, this is his work with his students. Um, he's going to give you an example of how uh, how much the fitness for use of GBIF enabled data uh, needs to be improved. And it's one example, and it's from Kenya.